What's up, everyone? It's John Samuel, and this is All Access Live. And today we have a very special guest. We have Jay Pope, who is the founder and CEO of Pope Tech. So welcome, Jay. How are you? Doing good, John. It's great to be here. Great to great to see you again. So. I know. I'm excited to, to, to have you on today, and I'm surprised I haven't had you on before. And, uh, you know, you recently moved to North Carolina from, from Utah, and, and so we've had the opportunity to to see each other in person because we actually started our relationship a few years ago. But, uh, you know, I would love to, to learn more about Pope Tech, introduce yourself so we can kind of, you know, understand your accessibility journey. Yeah. So I, uh, um, with my wife and three kids, we just moved to North Carolina this past summer from Utah. So that's been quite the adventure, but we're loving it. Um, uh, right before I was just telling John, like how much love the weather right now. <laughs> Perfect. Um, but me and my brothers, we, uh, so, so I used to work for Utah State University and, um, my introduction to accessibility was I was a front end developer and one day, um, I had built this application for the affordable care act to track mm -hmm. student, um, like, uh, timesheets basically. Yeah. And so I had done the front end on that mm -hmm. and we were in a meeting and they're like, well, good thing it's accessible. And I was like, wait, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> um, it wasn't quite as bad as that sounds. Like a yeah. lot of my training had included a lot of things with accessibility. Like I was doing forms right and images right, but I just didn't know and I didn't know why I was doing the things I was doing. <laughs> was it the assumption that everything was accessible? Did that person who asked you if it was accessible, do they know what accessibility was? Yeah, so they knew and they had the okay. assumption that it was. Because um, okay. it was a requirement, because they were starting yeah. to talk about, you know, some of the users with disabilities who'd be using this. Yeah. And this was like towards the end of the project. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so is this like, is this like a 0809? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So right around there. Um, and uh, uh, maybe a little bit, uh, maybe nine, like, maybe 2011, actually. Okay. Cool. Um, but yeah. So, and that was my introduction. And there was this group on campus called WebAIM because they're based out of Utah State. And so yeah. <laughs> we emailed Jared Smith and asked some questions. And <laughs> and then that was my first like aha moment of, oh, this, there's this thing. And so we went and fixed it. And, um, and then since then, you know, there was multiple moments like that. Like the first time I saw um, a, a blind user use a screen reader um, because, because after that, I realized this is important and I was doing it. And then when you actually were able to see the impact of the decisions that you're making, um, that was kind of like another like aha moment. Of, yeah. You know, well, I love the, I love all, I mean, you're right. It's the aha moments in accessibility. It's like, I was in my head, I'm going through, I'm like, yeah, it's, that is right. It's like everyone goes through that aha moment and, and it really is special. Yeah. So that, that was, uh, and then after that, we, uh, um, me, I, I met my wife on that team. So I was a <laughs> programmer. She was a graphic designer and we started freelancing um, and doing web design and then um, kind of partnered with my brothers. Um, so there are six uh, Pope brothers in <laughs> so, as partners and, um, and we, you know, created a web agency. So we built web apps and, um, and websites and did design and, um, but we always, uh, you know, had this, this accessibility thing, you know, in the back of our mind. Yeah. And we uh, worked with WebAIM to take the Wave. So Wave is a free um, testing tool you can use. Yeah. And so we partnered with them to um, take that and, you know, create a site-wide automated, you know, accessibility tool. And then that's all we do. We don't, we don't build websites anymore. We just mm. do accessibility. It's so much... Uh, uh, I guess more fun. <laughs> you, know. I mean, you know, when you got first exposed to to accessibility, when you talked about during the Affordable Care Act, creating that 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 platform, you know, you were relatively early in your development career, right? Yeah. So, do you, you know what was the impact of starting off early, thinking about accessibility? Like, what impact did that make? Well, so for example. Um, you know, years later, 
some of the first websites I did, they were still up and I'm like, there's accessibility issues. And, you know, I felt bad. Like I had created these problems, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, but by starting early to answer your question, I prevented like, like by, by understanding that early, having that training, um, you know, the next hundreds of websites that like didn't have those issues anymore. Cause a lot of the things aren't that difficult. Right. So you just yeah. learn how to do labels, right. You learn how to, do images right and now the next time i see that i just do it the right way right and so yeah. like you prevented all these other issues that you would have caused if you just didn't understand yeah break it down into steps and can you talk about how you're making it easy for easier for developers to make those uh correct issues by breaking it down into those simple issues yeah so like one of the main goals of pope tech is we want to help people simplify um, accessibility. Um, there's always, uh, you know, there's different tools and strategies. And so we, we want to simplify by helping teach people. And so every time, like we got a sales call, even, um, we're walking people through the process. So we've, um, kind of adapted a security framework into an accessibility framework. So mm -hmm. we took the NIST, NIST security framework and adapted it. And so we're teaching people just to understand, like, you have to think through not only like just automatic testing, but manual testing, but not just manual testing. Like, what do you do when you find issues? Yeah. So, I mean, you've probably seen this a bunch. You go out and do an audit, like Abler does a manual test and then yep. nobody fixes anything sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I know you have services <laughs> to help them fix it. Yep. Um, but, but that's a challenge of like, what do you do after you find the issues? Um, how do you prevent them from just happening over and over again? You know, yeah. early on, like one of our first customers, um, it was a movie theater company and they had one team fixing all the issues yeah. and then another team creating all the issues. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just over and over a cycle and we're like, yeah. this just not very useful, right? And so we try to help people like think through their processes and how like what's going to give you a more accessible outcome. And so, so Pope tech, um, kind of gives you that initial bent, like baseline. Here's where you're at for across all of your pages and then track your progress over time. Um, and then embed like teaching opportunities. So like, why does this matter? Um, yeah. how, how do you fix it? You know, yeah. um, that's, that's and I think that's why we are, we're partner with you. Cause we've actually even shifted our, um, our model, because you talked about it, right? We do the testing and then sometimes people didn't make the changes. So we shifted our process so that we're along the way, we're partnering with organizations now to really you know, be by their side as they're going through it. And I think that's very much aligned with what y'all do. And, and, I, and I really respect that. But, you know, based, you know, you, you have a lot of education clients where you have huge sites what are some of the things that you you've seen that a lot of people are making like you, know, you see a lot of these issues maybe common issues and what can people do what are some of those common issues and what can people do about them yeah um i mean a lot of the common like images forms headings um if you look um, so every year webaim will scan a million websites um, with automated with the wave engine mm -hmm. and they look at the top five issues and they're really the same things all the time. Um, and they are easy to train on, but the challenge, so like you brought up, we have a lot of higher ed, um, clients. Yeah. They just have hundreds of content creators. There's so many people creating content. You have people creating course content, mm -hmm. websites, you know, there's, I mean, they'll literally have millions of pages, you know, at a lot of these universities. And so the challenge is getting people trained to have the, both the understanding of why and the impact of accessibility and then the technical of how and what. Mm -hmm. um, and so that can be a, you know, a big challenge for them. But one of the things I, I heard this and I wish I knew who I could attribute it to, but like many people knowing a little bit about accessibility um, is, is way more impactful than like just one expert trying to do it all at, at you know, a big organization. Yeah, um, you want the expert, but you want if you have a hundred people creating content, they can just understand mm -hmm. two or three or four principles. Um, yeah. 
that's going to be so impactful rather than playing whack-a-mole, trying to fix them all, you know? <laughs> exactly. Because you mean, and I think that's one of the things is some people see thousands of issues yep. and it's almost like shell shock. They're like, okay, well, I'm going to put that to the side. I'm not going to deal with that. I'll push that out. But when you realize, realize it, you can break it down to smaller pieces and bite size. And that goes back to what we were talking about. You know, I think one of the things that y'all have been working on is breaking it down into the smaller issues and helping to guide people. Say, let's fix this issue first. Right. right great. You did that. Let's move to the next right. one. <clears throat> and it makes it much more attainable. And how has the response been with organizations uh, with shifting to that model? Yeah, it's been um, in one of the, it's been really useful. And one of the reasons why is if you think about it, like um, people often talk about manual testing versus automated. Yep. And like that's not how we think about it at all. It's they're just they work together mm -hmm. because if if I'm manually testing, I'm like you're saying I'm breaking into smaller things. I'm doing maybe a small sample. Like if somebody has a million pages, you're not going to manually test a million pages. Yeah, you, you're going to be having a whole team for years to do that, right? Yeah, um, and then everything would change before you even got around to it. Um, yeah, and so you have to use sampling. So you break it down into bite-sized things and you sample it. Um, and then automated testing goes the other way, where you can test a million pages, but you're testing a smaller sample. Yep. So one is you're testing a smaller sample of pages, and the other you're testing a smaller sample of tests. And then by working together, you have more, you know, coverage. But when somebody's looking at it, they need to break it down into something small. If I if I could just fix all the issues on four pages, on most sites, I'm eighty percent there, maybe even ninety. Yeah. Right, because I've caught templates, I've caught components. You'd be a little strategic about the four pages. Um, That's correct. And so that can be, uh, you know, really impactful of breaking it down into smaller chunks. And then one of the things that I always tell people too is, um, it's not just about testing everything. You want to test because if you test everything and don't fix it, it didn't do you any good. So you need to test something that you're actually going to fix. So if I could just test all, let's say all my images on my website yeah. and fix all those and actually go through the whole process. I fix them. I add training in to prevent them. So I kind of go through this whole framework. Mm -hmm. um, well, that's really impactful. And now I know what to do for the next thing because I can build off my success. So now I can go add in another principle. And yeah. Build off of it, so. For your first GAD event or when you heard about GAD? Um, yeah, so it was, I, I've gone to a bunch remote because um, I was in, uh, I lived in Northern Utah and there wasn't a ton of GAD events going on. <laughs> so, um, so I've been to a bunch remote. Um, so this actually will be my first in-person one. So I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah. Um, but I, I have enjoyed just an extra focus on accessibility just throughout the community. Um, you see more people talking about it. There's things posted on social media. And I think, you know, the goal is just have more people have that aha moment of, hey, this thing is important. Let's, you know, this really impacts people's lives. So, yeah, no, I'm excited, too, because this is a this is my first physical one. I'm nice. hosting it. We're hosting it. But, <laughs> you know, it's like, um, you know, but for me, you know, it started off five years ago and I wrote a blog. And I think that was the found the, the original, you know, GAD started off with like, and he, with a blog and, and I, and I did that with my own journey, starting off with that. And then, you know, we moved into the pandemic and everything and right. we moved into virtual events, but it really is exciting to, to have a physical event and to bring great leaders like yourself uh, into a room. And, you know, we, and the best thing about it is, and this is something I really wanted to make sure that our GAD event was not, was I didn't want us to be speaking to the echo chamber. Right. And what's super exciting is that, we have over 100 people who are you know, 130 or 40 people now who are coming. Majority of those people are not accessibility, right? right. I think 90% awesome. are not accessibility, which right. is like, that's the purpose of this, right? We want those aha moments that you just talked about. But, you know, I think in the triangle, we're lucky that we have some amazing, you know, accessibility folks. From yeah, there's a, there's a lot going on in the triangle. So it's, it, it's amazing. It's amazing. And uh, 
and I'm hoping that we can bring this, you know, we will be bringing it to the to everyone, making a hybrid event. So really excited about that. But really excited to have you and and others at, in the same room and uh, to share this. And Jay, I'm just so thankful for all you do at Pope Tech and the work that you've, you've been doing to create aha moments for everyone. So thank you, Jay.